today. AMD CPUs outsell Intel. NVIDIA's Super 2.0 is coming fast. AMD has officially ended support, and Ryzen 8000G is releasing soon. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, we get a pretty rare glimpse at how well AMD and Intel CPUs are selling in other markets. Specifically, we have a report on the Korean DIY market by Donawa Research. In it, they compiled analytical data from multiple DIY outlets, and their latest report shows that AMD just surpassed Intel in CPU sales. As you can see, earlier in the year, AMD wasn't doing all that great against Intel, likely due to the AM5 platform's substantial cost increase. But since then, AMD has begun taking ground back, with the latest month showing the company take the lead. Not only that, but their AM5 platform CPUs have now taken a lead over AM4 with a 55.3% share of all AMD CPUs sold in October. Out of all the 7,000 CPUs, AMD 7500F is the clear winner, with the 7800X3D coming in second place. Either way, it looks like AMD's newest generation of CPUs are finally beginning to get a foothold in the market. But first, as PC enthusiasts, we all love having the best. But unlike PC hardware, you don't have to spend a ton of money to use the best learning platform out there with today's sponsor, Brilliant. And when I say you don't have to spend a lot, I mean you can try it out for free when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermelt. As for what makes them the best, I like to talk about the fact that they were made specifically to teach the STEM field, but that's not even the biggest reason. What I love is that you learn by doing, so no more memorizing a bunch of forms formulas or anything like that. Instead, you get in there and do it yourself with their interactive and engaging puzzles. Whether it's learning about LLMs or large language models that power your favorite chatbots to learning how to code, they've got it all. And like I said, they're currently offering my viewers a 30-day free trial when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Plus, when you sign up at brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you can get 20% off their premium membership for life. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Next up for today, NVIDIA looks to be preparing their RTX 4000 Super release. As known leaker, Megasize GPU just showed what they claim is the packaging for NVIDIA's upcoming RTX 4070 Ti Super, which yes, it is apparently going to be a thing, using both Ti and Super on the same card. And as you can see, the logo is a bit different from their RTX 20 Super cards. This time, it's just a rectangle around Super, so a bit more of a basic design. He also shows the color that's used for the background behind the super. All in all, I think it looks alright. Nothing special, but not the worst, I guess. It's just odd that NVIDIA is now planning to mix their TI and Super naming schemes. Either way, they're clearly coming pretty soon, with CES being the rumored release date so far. And if you follow this channel, you've likely seen their rumored specs, so there isn't much to talk about there. The real question, as always, boils down to price. And to be one of the first to find out about that, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld. Next up, I discussed a rumor not too long ago that claimed AMD is officially set to drop support for both Vega and Polaris GPUs, pointing out the fact that AMD hadn't released a new driver in some time. Since then, they did release a driver, but it was odd because it didn't mention any game optimizations. So I decided to wait a bit before discussing it, and sure enough, my suspicions were correct, as AMD has officially announced that moving forward, both Vega and Polaris GPUs will only receive critical security updates. AMD does claim that the support is greater than for products categorized as legacy, but new game updates like Day One Drivers are over for both of these architectures. Of course, products can't be supported forever, but what's wild is that at the same time, Nvidia still supports their older Maxwell architecture. Not only that, but this includes all of AMD's Vega-based APUs like their still popular 5000G desktop APUs. AMD claims that it's because the architecture architectures are quote, mature, stable, and performant, and don't benefit as much from regular software tuning. But of course, I doubt that's the case for newer games. And while their APUs probably aren't able to handle newer titles, don't forget that this includes GPUs like Vega 64. With that said, let me know what you think. Are you still using a Vega or Polaris GPU to game? Let me know down in the comments below. 
And lastly for today, AMD's releasing Ryzen 8000G desktop APUs. And we now have specs and everything. Oh, and you heard that right, 8000G, not 7000. The story originally comes from a tweet by the outlet HKEPC. As you can see, they claim to have received the information from a Taiwanese motherboard manufacturer. Apparently, they received engineering samples as well as word that they're going to be called the Ryzen 8000G series. For now, four SKUs are known. The Ryzen 3 8300G, the Ryzen 5 8500G and 8600G, and the Ryzen 7 8700G, along with Pro versions. When it comes to specs, he also claims that two of the CPUs are based on AMD's new Phoenix 2 architecture, which if you saw my recent recent video, you know that it includes CPUs with both their Zen 4 and Zen 4C cores. Meaning if this is right, AMD is bringing their hybrid core architecture to desktop, taking us one step closer to potentially bringing higher core count CPUs like Intel has done. Here is the two lower end parts that have it, with the 8300G coming with one big core and three little cores, as well as a 4CU integrated GPU. Now, 4CUs may not seem like much, but remember that this is going to be going from Vega all the way to RDNA 3, so a huge difference. Moving up, we have the 8500G, which comes with two big cores and four little cores, once again with four CUs. Then we have the 8600G, which comes with six full Zen 4 cores and eight CUs. But finally, we have the big daddy, AMD's Ryzen 7 8700G, and it's set to come with 8 Zen 4 cores and a whopping 12 RDNA 3 CUs. Remember that the 5700G only comes with 8 CUs and it's based on their Vega architecture, so a huge difference here. As for release, we can expect them by either the end of this year or early 2024. Personally, I'd bet AMD plans to release them around CES, but of course, with Vega losing support, AMD will want to get them out as soon as possible. So while that does it for today, are you excited for AMD's next-gen desktop APUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!